Great scenes from great plays. Tonight, Madeline Carroll in Lady with a Lex. Now here's your host, the distinguished actor-manager, Mr. Walter Hampton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another transcribed half hour of great stars in great plays, presented on behalf of the Protestant Episcopal Church in your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild. Tonight you are to hear Philo Higley's adaptation of Reginald Barclay's drama, The Lady with a Lamp, starring Miss Madeline Carroll as Florence Nightingale. We dedicate our story tonight to the American Red Cross. <laughs> In order to achieve her dream to found the great tradition of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale had to oppose the world she lived in. The somber standards of her day would have barred this woman from her achievement. But she found a way, in spite of them, to awaken a far-reaching spirit of compassion for human suffering and to give it practical embodiment. It's a summer day in the England of 1842. A splendid carriage nears the gates of a great country estate, and in it sits a girl. Yes, sir. Stop! Stop that carriage! Yes, Miss Florence. Something's wrong up there in the field. John! John Collins, what's the matter? It's Willie Reed, Miss Florence. He fell on his plowshare and he's cupped up something terrible. We must help, Webster. Bring some water from the brook. Miss Florence, his shoulder's laid wide open. There's a lot of blood. I'm going up there all the same. He may have cut an artery. Give me your hand, John. It's so, so steep right here. There. Well, Willie, it looks as if you reversed the proverb and made your plowshare a sword. Let me look at you. It's, it's not so bad, Miss Florence. Only... I feel queer. Here, bandage it. I've lots of extra ruffles on my petticoat. Oh, Miss, no. What would your father say? I'm sure he'd call me very selfish, Willie, if I didn't help you. John, hold his arm straight up. The water, Miss. Good. We'll put the cloth against the wound, and then just one more ruffle and tie it around, will you? There, now. Well, for folk like us, you really shouldn't trouble this way, Miss. Nonsense. Webster, bring the carriage nearer. Must. What, Miss Floyd? We must take Willie to his cottage before we drive me home. It was strange, Mama. Willie's such a strong fellow. And there he sat, weak as a child. But, Florence, your petticoat and those gentlemen about. Oh, how did you ever learn to bandage an arm anyhow? I asked our family to show me one day. Oh, my dear, I do wish you'd stop discussing these wild, impractical notions of yours in front of other people. Henry Tremaine, for instance. For remember, Henry will be here for our little dance tonight. Now, please, Florence. I remember, Mama. It's been exactly two weeks and three days now since I've seen Henry. A long, long time, I think. Lord Palmerston has arrived, Mrs. Nightingale. Heavens, I'm not blessed to receive guests. I'll keep Lord Palmerston company. You step out by the other door. But, oh, dear child, your gown, that dog. He won't notice. it. Besides, I want to talk to him. You better hurry, my mom. <laughs> Show Lord Palmerston in, Hob. Yes, sir. Will you come into the library, or Lord? Well, Miss Dolan. Lord Palmerston, it's nice to have you here again. Are you staying for our party? Now that you ask me, of course I am. I'm glad. But right now, while we're alone, there's something I must ask you. Well? Lord Palmerston, you know that I was in London most of the winter. When I saw things there, I can't forget. The slums, those miserable people. They have nobody, nobody at all to care for them. Care for them? I, somehow I have a feeling I might help. Oh, you mean visits to the poor and that sort of thing? No, I mean nursing, mending their hurts. I seem to have a certain knack for it. But, my dear, with your upbringing, why, this is preposterous. It, it's impractical. Oh, I'm always being told that I'm impractical. 
Why can't women do things in this world? Well, my dear, they already play a certain role in the continuity of the race, you know. But surely they're suited for more than that. Oh, someday, perhaps someday, but not now, my dear, not now. Oh, I did think you could help me. Not now. Why not now? See what you've done with your life. They say you're going to be the next prime minister. Well, even a prime minister could hardly tell you how to escape a pair of loving, anxious parents. But if you must follow this idea, there's a bit of advice for you. Now, Florence, my dear, be ready for your chance when it arrives. I spent 20 years at the war office while others moved on past me. But I wanted to be ready if the big chance did arrive. You see, my dear, it's all in the training. Training is exactly what I need. Why shouldn't women be taught to heal as, as you have taught your politics? My dear, I think perhaps you've made a point. Have I? Have I really, Lord Thomas? Well, the idea is right, at least. Then you have given me something. Encouragement, and I've needed it. When no one sees, it's so confusing. But this, this could be a purpose. A goal to work for. <laughs> I remember both. How could I forget the fountain? We sailed paper boats on it. When my family used to bring me here to visit years ago. <laughs> we never saw the fountain in the moonlight, though, like this. No, not together. Hans, I've been trying to be alone with you all evening. And I've been trying to avoid it. Florence. Florence. Florence, I'm in love with you. You see, I was afraid you'd say that. You mean you couldn't love me? Henry, dear, I do love you. No, oh, don't. I... With you, I feel so sure and safe. Oh, I've wanted to hear that. I've wanted you to say those very words for so long now. Before I... I felt that something else was in your thoughts. Perhaps someone else. Something you want to do. There is something that I have to do. Want it or not. Before I can think just of happiness with you. So I, I don't understand. Henry, that last night I saw you in London... I told you about going through Salisbury Hospital, seeing those dreadful wards, those hopeless charity cases. Oh, you must learn to forget experiences I like that. I can't. I can't forget suffering. I've dreamt a certain dream over and over again. It's always night, and I'm up there on the terrace. There's a confused mob of people at the doors. They're carrying mattresses and stretches, and someone with a lamp is walking among them. Perhaps a lamp to light the dark for those who suffer. Then I realize suddenly that the woman with the lamp is I. The place isn't home at all, but somehow very far away. A great hospital. Hospitals again. Oh, so, dear, you only torture yourself with these phantoms. Why it should be I, I'm not quite sure. But I must try to find the reason. Dearest, it's a very noble dream. I don't want to be noble. That's not the idea. Oh, dear. You almost sound like someone who's dedicated to a cause. Perhaps I am. It is a cause, if you want to call it that. And now it's taken on a new purpose. That's why I had to tell you, to be fair. Flo, we love each other. That's all that counts. Tell me you'll marry me. I have some wonderful plans to travel, see the world. You'll come with me. I can't say that. It's as if I weren't free, Henry. If only I can find out. Can't you find out as my wife? If I tried to do two things, it wouldn't be an honest effort either way. I'd like you to see that. I think I can. And I'll wait, Flo. I'll wait till you've decided that you want it. But it may take years. I've no way of knowing. Flo, I believe that when you learn the sordid side of this fine dream, you'll change your mind. The women always have that right, don't they? But this is beyond those soothing little phrases, Henry, dear. You must understand that if you do wait. Somehow I must discover how to do this thing. I must. And so you see, Doctor, we women do need the training so badly, and the sick so need our care. Women can help you in your clinic. They might be organized. They might... Sorry, Miss Nightingale. We have no provision whatever for training beginners. Sir Wilfred, I've tried doctors, private clinics, hospitals. There's not one spark of interest. Then I thought of this idea. Training of nurses by the government. 
The poor have no one to serve them, no one at all. I have submitted your report, Miss Nightingale. There are no funds available for such a project. Well, Charles, I suppose you've heard. Henry Tremaine has gone away. Yes, I've heard, Mama. To travel in the Orient. Two years, at least. Well, you see now what your notions lead to. You've missed your chance with Henry. I heard about his leaving yesterday, and you're right. It hurt. But I must keep on. I can't turn back. Not now. <laughs> and I put up coming to see you. I didn't want to tell you I had failed. But no one will have me or my ideals. Is there no place I can find the thing I need? No place in all England? In all England? I'm afraid not. But I've heard of what they're doing on the continent. The Sisters Charity Clinics in Paris. And there's the amazing hospital huts of that German, uh, that German priest at Kaiserswerth. Then, of course, in Switzerland there. Oh, but my child, that would be harder still. The continent. I don't care if it is hard. I've got to learn. <laughs> yes, Miss Nightingale. We've heard about your work in France and Germany. And now you're back in London. We think you might take charge of our new nursing home in Harley Street. What did you say it would be called, Lady Dryden? In the hospital for invalid gentlewomen. Dear me, must all the patients be gentlewomen? Our funds are limited, Miss Nightingale, and our own time must be considered first. I'm afraid my idea of a hospital is a place where all sorts of people are made well. If we ought to be associated, I'm sure you'll understand our view in time. Isn't it more likely, Lady Dryden, that you may come to see a larger need? Still, this is the start. The first that has been offered me. I'm grateful. I accept. You're very kind to help. Just carry him in here. But this nightingale, you don't want to bring that man in here. Don't I, Miss Burr? Who is he? I haven't an idea, but I know he's unconscious, trampled by the crowd. Like white horses out there, but perhaps doesn't know what it is. Miss Burr, get a bed ready right away. Oh, Miss Nightingale. Hurry, please. Is Dr. Wren still here? Ask him to come at once. Bring some hot water. Oh, dear. So it's war in the car near, then. Sure is, Mum. The bad one, too. If old Palmerston was still at the foreign office, them blasted Russians have never risked it. War in the Crimea. Thousands of miles away. They'll be wounded. And they're not ready. What's to become of them? Florence, dear. I've heard it everywhere that you've actually petitioned to be sent to the Crimea. Two months ago, I wrote the war officer, Ma. It's the same old story, silent. And we thought you were so happy in your cozy little hospital in Holland. Have you read the latest news report? Soldiers dying like flies. No care, no hospitals, no medical equipment. But, Lawrence, it's preposterous. English girls don't do these things. English soldiers don't die either, just because they choose to. Well, they're dying now by thousands. Sergeant Jill, the Prime Minister is calling. Says it's urgent, too. Your pardon, Cynthia? Ask them to come in, Hodge. Ladies, I hope you're both well. Oh, very well, Lord Palmerston. Uh, perhaps you wish to speak to Florence privately. No, you might be interested in what I've come to say. Miss Florence, we in the government must confess the sluggishness of time. Wheels within wheels, as you know. But your letter has been studied and it makes excellent sense, my dear. We want to send out a corps of nurses to organize base hospitals and to place you in full charge if you will consent. If I consent. This is an innovation for the army, but a real organizing brain like yours can get results. Can Florence do this? There is no one else in the whole world who can. Florence. Oh, darling, I am proud of you. Perhaps I was foolish to oppose. Mother, at last you see. 
Lord Palmerston, you've made me very happy. Of course I'll go. And thank you. Thank you for giving me the chance. back in London after all these months. I rush up from the station. I wait and wait downstairs, surrounded by trunks and confusion. Oh, Henry, they didn't tell me I wouldn't keep you waiting. You know that, not you, after all this time. It doesn't matter. It does to me. It's wonderful to see you. But I... I'm going away. Oh. Just as I get back, you're leaving. I'm afraid so. Darling, I'm ready to do whatever you say. I'll build a hospital for you. We'll stop it as you wish. We'll be married and work it out together. Henry, I haven't told you where I'm going, have I? No. I'm going to the Crimea. The Crimea? They've appointed me to organize base hospitals. I'm taking nurses. Things are already desperate. Oh, there. please, please, you've wasted your youth chasing shadows. Now you're risking your life. Henry, this idea of the hospital. Oh, a hospital. It's, it's magnificent of you. But it isn't just one hospital any longer, or one country any longer, either. Pain is everywhere. The easing of it must be true. I've waited years, Florence. Forget me, Henry, dear. And forgive me. You mustn't wait any longer. It isn't fair. I can't forget you, Flo. I, I've tried. There simply isn't anyone else who matters. I love you, dear. I always love you. But, Henry, don't you see? There's still so much I have to do. Miss Nightingale. Gone down to the supply, supply store's doctor to try and take some blankets for the extra rush of wounded. Uh, back in England, they seem to think that all we need out here is Epsom salts and sherry wine. We've been here, Crazy Doctor. And now two more shiploads of wounded this afternoon. Uh, has she, uh, has she any extra dressing here in the staff room? Yes, here, sir. Carbolized lint. Thank goodness. Really, Miss Nightingale's a genius. She ought to have a public monument. The Surgeon General doesn't think so. The Surgeon General's a clown. Medicine played is a power game. Now, come in here, please, Dr. Bamford. There she is now, with the pervasive. Well, settle it now, please. Oh, Dr. Ames, they've started bringing the wounded up from the harbor. Yes, and we're out of bandages upstairs. No lint. Practically no antiseptic. Sit down, Mr. Bamford. Nurse, let me have the list we sent to Mr. Bamford's office every morning all this week. No, 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 Miss Nightingale. There are official channels for these things. I what can't. have I had from your army store since I came here? Almost nothing. Look at this list. The things I begged you for so urgently. You forget we had a ship lost in the yes, house months ago. And ever since, I've heard that wretched ship as an excuse. You could have replaced these things from England or bought them locally. Locally? Those aren't the regulation pattern. Regulations is a red tape. According to regulations, then my patient shouldn't die. But many of them do, Mr. Vance. I'm only following war office rules. In a man's world, man, you must be practical. Oh, stop! All my life I've heard that word. I won't endure it now. You ladies don't see how the system works. I have to follow the system. And we're crowded to our doors with dying men. My job is to care for the sick and wounded. Your job is to supply our desperate needs. Blankets, medicines, more bandages. You have them and I know it. Those haven't been passed yet and the board doesn't sit till Friday. Mr. Bamford, I don't care how you do it. Steal your own stores if you like. We must have them tonight. It's impossible. I order you to supply these things. Well, first you have to change the regulations, ma'am. I'm not going to change the regulations. I'm going to change the purveyor. Oh, you will have your little joke, Miss Nightingale. Mr. Bamford, if I don't receive these supplies in full, I'll advise the government I can't remain in my position if you remain in yours. Now, do we understand each other? <coughs> no, um, a few of each wouldn't do, I suppose. Uh, uh, the board might notice Take this if I was... I want the full amount, tonight. Well, you'll have to explain this to the board. The wounded are being carried in now, Miss Nightingale, the first lot. And it's already dark. Are the nurses standing by in the ward, Miss West? Oh, yes. So many of them. There's one man here asking to see you, Miss Nightingale. Very well, where is he? Easy with him, lad. 
We'll stretch your ear, ma'am. Leave them. That's all, men. No. Is that you, sir? Friend. Didn't... Didn't expect me here, did you? How did... Why did you... What if you could be in it? I could, too. Oh, no. Do you mean because of that last time in London? Oh, how do we know what... What pushes us? Anyhow, I missed it. I know. Wounded you. Finish me, Palbury. I only held out on that ghastly ship so I could see you for a moment. Tell you. Yes, get the surgeon quick. Or do something about those ships. They're horrible. Wounded men oughtn't to be tortured that way. I know it's bad. We're setting it right, trying to, little by little. You must go on, Florence. I, I had to tell you. You were right from the beginning. And I was so wrong. Now that I've seen... Darling, don't talk. Don't waste your strength. But remember... Remember the fountain flow? Henry, don't. Don't. In your dream. All the sick carried in. You with your lamp. Oh, are they still calling you impractical? Oh, how blind, how blind. You think so now, and now I wonder. You did love me once. I know you did. I love you now. Oh, it's part of my life. My efficient, organized life. It's a fine, fine life. It was mine that was empty. I, I was so slow to understand. Oh. It's dark. Very dark. I'll light the lamp, shall I? That's better, isn't it? Fountain. I should have understood. your hand. Yes, yes, Henry, dear. You'll get well now. You've got to. I'll do anything you say. We'll have our life together after all, back in England. No more goodbyes. Lighten our darkness. We beseech thee, O Lord. You know that old prayer, don't you, Flo? And by thy great mercy, defend us. Defend us from all perils. And the dangers of this night. For the, the love, love of thy only Son, our King. Our the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us. Henry. Henry. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. I came as soon as I could, Miss Nightingale, in the ward there. Go back, doctor. They need you. It's too late here. Yes. Yes, I see. Uh, can you help me now? Two amputations in the wards. Immediately, I... Yes, yes, of course. Go, doctor. I'll come. You'd better bring the lamp, Miss Nightingale. It's very dark in the corridor. Yes, very dark. I'm coming, doctor. Good night, my love. Lord Thomas, that I believe you're deliberately trying to discourage me. But these reforms of yours, challenging the war office, demanding that army medicine reorganize, they're impractical, I fear. I'm fighting for a very simple thing. The memory of those men who died in my arms in the war. Faithful, uncomplaining, the common soldier. But my dear, this ferocious pace. Isn't it time you rested a little? But there's so much apathy, indifference, even in your cabinet, Lord Palmerston. My dear, the war's been over for six years. Now, why not enjoy life? You've got many good years ahead of you, Florence, dear. Don't waste them on a dream. Waste, did you say? It isn't just a dream. You said yourself, Lord Palmerston, if you're going to accomplish anything in this world, you have to face tremendous odds, huge issues. 
That's the challenge. But I'm ready for it. Because I seek a challenge, too. A challenge to indifference everywhere. There's so very much we need. Decent sanitation, new army hospitals, new treatments, modern nursing, schools to teach it, doctors to recognize it, public health in our cities, in the villages of India. Those are some of the things we have to have. And I can't give up until we do, no matter who opposes us, no matter all the years it takes, no matter anything but the goal. <laughs> The impulse of mercy is as old as the human heart, and from it has come the great forces through which man may express his desire to do something for his fellow men. Florence Nightingale raised the lamp of compassion for all mankind to see. Like Henri Dunant of Switzerland and Clara Barton of America, she helped light the road for men of conscience throughout the world. Today, the collective efforts of these humanitarian leaders are merged in a single banner the banner of the Red Cross. If you're already a member of some church, you know that part of the work of the church, part of the reward of church membership, is being active in the great work of organizations like the Red Cross. For like your own church, the American Red Cross, because it is the American people, is part of every hamlet, town, and city of our country. And like part of the work of your own church, the work of the Red Cross is carried on to help those less fortunate. Now, this is the eve of the Red Cross campaign. This weekend, which is dedicated as Red Cross Sabbath and Sunday, is the time to dedicate ourselves to a share of this work. Remember this great organization's strength and success lies mainly in those of us who voluntarily give of our services, knowing that our efforts, given willingly and unselfishly, will be combined with the efforts of those already engaged in this personal service to others. <laughs> I want to thank our cast, and especially you, Miss Carroll, for a very stirring performance. Music on tonight's program was composed and conducted by Nathan Crowe. Miss Madeline Carroll is now starring in the Broadway success, Goodbye, My Fancy. Now, here is Walter Hamden again to make an important announcement. On next Wednesday, March the 2nd, the day known as Ash Wednesday, the whole of the Christian world unites in the observance of Lent. And since this is the last weekend before the beginning of Lent, tonight's program is the last in this fall and winter series of great scenes from great plays. We want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for being with us and for the many fine and heartwarming letters you've written us. We would particularly like to have you write to us now while we're making plans for next fall. Won't you tell us which programs you have most enjoyed? And if you have some favorite great play you would like to hear dramatized on this program in the future, just address your letters to Great Scenes from Great Plays in care of the station to which you are listening. We look forward to being with you next fall with the second series of Great Scenes from Great Plays. Now, a message from the church. More particularly at this time than at any other, all of us should promise ourselves to attend church regularly. If you are already a member of some church and have not been attending services regularly, we urge you to return to your church this Sunday. If you are not a member of any church, you will always be welcome at your nearest Episcopal church, where you too may learn the true Christian faith, which is the foundation of all real living happiness.